question. Are you a data engineer who just heard about Airflow and wants to learn more about it? Are you having a hard time managing workflows for your data team? Or are you just looking for a reliable and easy to use orchestration tool for your data pipelines? If you answered yes to any of those questions, then my friend, you should keep watching this video all the way to the end. Let's jump in. Hey there everybody, my name is Saurav and in this video we are going to be discussing the fundamentals of Airflow in under 3 minutes. First up, what is Airflow? Airflow is an open source platform for developing, scheduling and monitoring batch oriented workflows. Okay, so what does that even mean? It's a free platform that lets you create batch oriented workflows. So basically, if your use case is for real time workflows, Airflow is not the tool for you. For example, if you're trying to display data on an app in real time, such as Uber, which shows you the live location of the driver, do not use Airflow for it. It's just not meant to be used that way. Now, let's try to get some clarity on the word workflow. Workflows are just a series of activities. It's just another word for a data pipeline or another word for an ETL or another word for an ETL pipeline, or an ETL job, or sometimes just a job. I don't know, man. In the data world, people use all sorts of words for it. Anyway, let's understand with the help of an example. Let's say you are a data engineer and you need to build a data pipeline to retrieve data from some API, let's say YouTube API, and then load it to a database table. So your workflow is going to be a series of three activities. Number one, get the API response from the YouTube API endpoint. Number two, create a JSON file out of it. And then number three, load it to a database table. Now, in Airflow land, workflows are known as DAGs, short for Directed Acyclic Graphs. And the activities are known as tasks. Now, let's talk about how can you write a DAG in Airflow. An Airflow DAG consists of three components. Number one, tasks, which we kind of talked about previously. But anyway, tasks are defined using tasks templates called operators. Good thing Airflow has a great ecosystem so you can create all sorts of tasks using operators. You want to copy files from one S3 bucket to another? You can. Use the S3 to S3 operator. You want to run a Postgres query every six hours? You can. Use the Postgres operator. You want to insert data to your Salesforce application? Hell yeah, you can. Just use, you got it, the Salesforce operator. So you get the idea. There are plenty of operators to pick from depending on your needs. Dependencies. Dependencies let you define the sequence in which to run the tasks in. You can run one task after another. You can run four tasks in parallel. Why not? You get to choose what you want to run and when you want to run it. You do you. Schedule. Schedule is a cron expression for the DAG. If you do not want to run it on a schedule, you can trigger the execution based on the occurrence of a certain event. So now let's just summarize. So in this video, we learned what is Airflow. Well, it's an orchestration platform to create automated batch oriented workflows. And then we talked about what a DAG is and its three basic components. So when you write a DAG, you'd have to specify three things, tasks, dependencies, and the schedule. And that'll be it for this video, guys. I hope this helped you get an understanding of Airflow. If you want to know how to install Airflow and write your very first DAG, click here. If you want to write a PostgreSQL DAG in under three minutes, click here. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.